right, let's make sure we put our seatbelt on. For, uh, for, for, for YouTube, we're almost there. Yeah, we're almost there. Let's put the seatbelt on here before we intro the video here real quick. Hey, look at all those big water jugs. Oh, there they are. Oh my goodness, look at all them water jugs. Sawyer, man, they keep, is, they keep water in those things, right? I thought so. You know, Farmer Greg just, uh, you know, those, that's that, that's got to be either corn, you know, wheat, mm. some barley. Oh, yeah, water would be bad in there. Yeah, it wouldn't, I don't think it would hold very well by there, Michael. So we learned 15% or less. I was just about to wind up to do that. What's up, guys? Welcome <laughs> back to another video. As you can see, we are driving on a road in America. We are on a road trip to Ohio. This is starting off very well. We're gonna recover from it though, don't you worry. I have been eluding that we have another engine for the first gen and I misplaced slash lost the footage of us tearing down the engine at said place. So we're gonna play a little catch up here. So you say catch up? Catch up or catch up? Catch up. So we're catching up here. We have another engine for the first gen after Dawson happened to blow it up. Maybe not blow it up, but it's on its last leg. So first gen engine's on its way out. It's got 400,000 miles on it. We had a spare 12 valve engine sitting in the shop that we decided to break down up here at Enterprise Engine in Ohio. Uh, they are gonna be doing some machining or actually past tense, already did the machining work for us. Uh, so we are staying with the 12 valve platform for the first gen uh, because the first gen is just a, you know, old mechanical dinosaur, ain't that right, Michael? Yeah, you know, stick, just, to, stick to your roots. Yeah, I mean, not everything deserves a common rail swap. Not that we don't love the first gen enough to <laughs> common rail swap it, but you know, we just gotta, we gotta, you know, you gotta have at least one 12 valve in the collection. So uh, we're staying 12 valve. We broke down uh, our old, I think that engine had like 300,000 miles on it. It really wasn't in terrible shape. No real bad scoring. I don't know, but did this, did, when you talked to Brandon, mm -hmm. did it stay standard? I'm assuming that it stayed standard. It did. We didn't get any news that it wasn't standard. I bought standard pistons, so hopefully we don't, you know, 20 or 40 over with standard pistons. I mean, it might be just a, just a little bit of a problem. So we want to make some power with the first gen. So we knew we needed a healthy heart. So broke down that old engine, uh, Brandon up here. Do you want to, you want to talk about, I mean, you've known Brandon for a very long time. For those of you guys, I'll get to, I'll get to you in a second. I know you just asked you a question, but we're, we're rambling right here. I'm going to go with it. Most of you guys, you young bucks out there, won't even know what Enterprise Engine is. But Enterprise Engine is about as OG as you can get. I think, Michael, you want to you want to take it from there, uh, Grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> pop pop, hey pop pop, tell us about these old old stories about you and it was just yeah, like well it was it was way before me too. Like they took stock parts and from this and that and just made a bunch of power and they were just kind of the leading edge of like the aftermarket world back in the day. So they just, were they were what you would call the dinosaur experts. Yeah. So it's like I'm, pre billet pre billet parts. If that makes any sense. So like Yes. So we, Michael's been friends with the guy who does a lot of the work up here. His name is Brandon. You'll see him. We videoed some of him before, but, uh, you know, it just, it, it got lost. Okay. It got lost. It happens to the best of us. So anyway, we're almost there. We're going to walk you guys through the engine, kind of, uh, some of the choices that we made, uh, around this engine with some parts, a uh, huge shout out to Josh at power driven diesel. My buddy, Josh, uh, who also has a YouTube channel, I'll put some information up here. He got us hooked up with some of these fine dinosaur power power parts uh, that we needed, some pistons, some, some bearings. So these guys did the machine work for us. We're actually gonna bring it back and assemble it and maybe show you guys, well actually not maybe, we will show you guys some of the details. You know, we got Ninja, Ninja Power over here is gonna assemble the engine with us. Um, and yeah, we're gonna have some fun. But today we are picking it up and you guys are gonna see, we've got a super nice Hamilton Warhead cylinder head. We are gonna make some power, boys. I don't care how many bottles of nitrous that it takes, but we are going to have a healthy heart, and we are gonna make some power, and that's all there is to it. So, that's a that's a, that's a a start for where we're at. You know, maybe some trucks just deserve to stay people. Ooh, depends on how you look at it. Some trucks may just deserve to be 12 out for life. Those guys are special. Uh, they probably have a couple screws missing, and uh, they don't really make, like to make a lot of power and drive it on the street. But hey, who am I to judge? Common rail for life. But you know what? We are staying 12 valve on this. Are you looking for a train track? Yeah. Train 
Wait, oh, the... <laughs> All right, boys. Well, we're in the middle of Ohio picking up our engine. Uh, shameless plug of the day. If you guys have not heard, wrenchworks.com is having a sale right now. Got to plug in your email, your phone number, and get spit you out a code, get you 10% off everything on the website. Go grab that stuff. That is the best way to support the channel, support your boys. And here we are. Back up, Terry. Back it on up, Terry. We're here. Now, Michael, would you call this a motor or an engine? Let's get let's get the comment section fired up right now. Guys, is an engine considered a motor as well? Do you call things motors that are an engine? Or is an engine a motor? I think it just depends how excited you are. The motor word gets thrown around a lot if you're just excited. <laughs> but it's really an engine. Motors and engines are different. Well, I'm excited, so it's a motor right All right, let's go, let's go, baby. Michael, I don't, I don't think, I don't think we saw this gem over here the last time we were here. Maybe this door was shut? America. That, I was waiting for, who's gonna be the first one to say America? <laughs> that's, that's America right there. Brandon, what is this? Leave a comment down below if we should convince Brandon to let us buy this sled pulling truck that is America. Is this yours? Yeah. Come on, yes it is. Now it's our customers, it's been severe for a bit, as you can tell. I love how somebody like got it out and set it there. <laughs> it's a couch, it's a couch and pillow for when I tell Michael that we have to uh, get this thing ready for, for beans in a week. Like, oh, there's, mo there's pul multiple pillows. <laughs> Oh yeah, a couple all-nighters, right? Look, this guy you'll be, you'll bought be. a daily, told a buddy he'd move, <laughs> one to pull, now he needs a new daily. I mean, uh, we've all seen that. And he needs a tire plug in the front here. Yeah. All right, so here's our new engine, guys. <laughs> all refreshed up, thanks, Brandon, appreciate it. No Ready to rip. <laughs> it's already been tested and proven. Look at that. That is, that is professional. Oof. Uh, did you did you literally see a piece of aluminum and head right towards it? Is that what we were walking over here? I'm like, why are we walking this way? You're like, oh, I see aluminum. Yeah, what is this? Brand 460. What is it? Huh? 460. Mm -hmm. Oh. What's that mean? What's it's a 460? It's a Ford 460. Spark plugs. Mm, blue oval ship. Trash. What? <laughs> Anything else? Something? Beautiful. Oh yeah. Some dinosaur power in that thing. What, are you complaining about the tailgate, really? <laughs> really? My goodness. Wait, hold on, ready? Oh, there we go. I ain't going nowhere. Now we're good. You gotta hit her with the, that ain't going nowhere. Mm. I don't know if they're gonna be able to hear over our over our truck, no, probably not. This this utility body ahead of us is a gasser, and man, that engine is just hating its life trying to move that much weight. But anyway, boys, we uh, we are loaded up. Whoa, let me zoom out here, let me zoom out. How do I do this, how do I do this? How do I control my own truck? Controls, cargo camera, there we go. We're packaged up, loaded down. I know you guys didn't get to see much, but we're gonna jump right to the shop and unload this baby and go over some details, show you guys exactly All right, guys, we have made it back home from our trip to Ohio with the engine parts. Uh, like I said before, when we got there, Brandon had already kind of wrapped everything up. I was hoping to show you guys all that stuff, but we're gonna do that now. We're gonna talk about all of the parts that we're using, kind of how we set this thing up, just a little bit of background because we're gonna dive into assembling the engine in the upcoming videos, and I don't really don't wanna talk about all that stuff with it. It's gonna be a lot of talking, so I'm trying to avoid that. So wanna get the base of what we're doing here done because I want to show you guys some tips, tricks, assembly stuff, uh, and that's going to take quite a bit of time. So I want to try and knock this out first, and then we can get into the engine. Oh yeah. 
Michael, I was telling them that we're going to go over the parts and what we're using, why we chose some of the things that we chose, go around a little bit, some of the background. That way, when we go to assemble the engine, you can teach them all of the little intricacies of putting it together. So putting it together and going over the background, it'd be a 30 minute talking video, which I know you guys absolutely love and would give this video a big thumbs up. So we're gonna try and knock out some of it now um, and get this baby unwrapped and get her, get her in the shop, get her prepped up. Cannot wait. This is a big, boys, this, this has the potential to be a big engine week because we should be going, I don't wanna jinx it, but we, ooh, don't do that. Okay, don't jinx it. Never mind. We're not going. We're not going anywhere. Anywhere cool. We're gonna focus on good old first gen twelve valve things. All right, let's back out Frank and see if we can pull this sucker out of here. There's a lot of beauty underneath this black covering. What? You see, I got the visor. Oh, you popped it. Oh, popped it, guys. If you have a sunroof and you do not pop the sunroof like that, it's basically a no flex zone. You gotta, you gotta get the flex going. It's a, it's a super big flex to have your sunroof popped like that, just so you guys know, in case you were wondering. Oh yeah, you got her. You got her. Nice, taking the whole mat and everything. That is nice. Excellent job, sir. Excellent job. I've watched this a lot. You've what? I've watched people do this a lot. Oh, really? You watch YouTube videos on it? How to properly unload vehicles. By the way, if you guys aren't using a mat like this to protect your bed, then what are you even doing? Nice. Nice. Not gonna lie, I had a little, I, 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 my faith was a little bit lacking, but uh, you know, you've proved me wrong yet again. Let's start with let's start with what's left on the pal the goodies over here right so we've got our I don't know this block probably had like 300,000 miles on it but was actually able to uh, come back to life as you can see we have got the deck surfaced we've got the cylinder walls looking absolutely mint cherry beautiful and in standard bore so we did not actually have to go any bigger now we kind of wanted it to stay standard correct to keep as much strength in the block now there's, there's, there's a million different ways. I guess we should start out by saying there's a million different ways people build engines. None of them are wrong. We just wanted to stay standard bore to keep some strength in the block. Um, you know, displacement versus standard, yada, yada, yada. Uh, we wanted to say standard. That was our choice. We wanted to try and do that. So standard block, uh, what else machine work wise did we got, get done to this baby? Kind of put studs in it. So you have to torque studs and then line home the mains. Otherwise they'll get kind of like eyeball oval shaped mm -hmm. so did that so pretty much the block is uh yeah i mean that's pretty much it right on the block nothing nothing crazy but we did spend the time to to get it line honed and get everything checked out and everything looks good so we should be able to uh have this baby make a lot of power hopefully if not we've got nitrous like always uh crank work uh pretty much just got it checked out make sure it's good got it polished up as you can see everything checked out well and I mean, standard crank, nothing crazy on the crank. Now, I, I guess we didn't, we never really talked about this. Uh, this build is, we were going for as budget as we felt comfortable with the amount of horsepower that we're gonna try and make. Obviously a thousand horsepower gets talked about a lot. On a P-pump, it's not easy. I hear people claim, I hear people claim a thousand horsepower on a 12 valve way more than I know that's out there because you know, common rail land, a couple keystrokes, I mean, it's no big deal. P-pump, uh, unless you got 13 mil pump, big stuff. So there's some other plans coming down the road, but for now, that's the goal. Um, but this was a budget-minded, uh, budget plus, budget plus, okay? So we did what we need to had to do 
to hopefully make some power, but not spend extra money. And you'll see that when we get over to the other table. So uh, our good buddy, uh, we took a trip down to Zach Hamilton quite a while ago. We have had this cylinder head quite a while ago. Uh, we're not actually sure if it's a warhead or not. So I'm not gonna call it a warhead, not sure if it's a warhead, but it is a Hamilton head that should be absolutely beast. As you can tell, we chopped off the uh, runner. Actually, I don't even know if this one came with a runner, but got some port work done all throughout it. Got a good, good valve job. We did actually have Brandon flow it. Does flow some pretty decent numbers. Again, not uh, nothing absolutely astronomically crazy, but this Hamilton head should really, really help us in the airflow department. It should be like their like stage four option. Mm, okay. We'll go with stage stage power. Stage power. Uh, so got a Hamilton head here. Uh, we got all of their Hamilton valve train, good valve jobs, got their valves in it. And we've got this beautiful log style intake runner, which should be absolutely beast in the truck. This is from the guys over at Pure Diesel Power. They were awesome enough to hook us up with this. Uh, they have these for sale. Go check them out. I'll leave a link down below if you guys are interested in this, but super, super nice intake runner. We'll show you guys a little bit more as we're building it um, kind of in, in there, but airflow, would you say 12 valves are just like a, uh, you know, they need a lot of air. They need a lot of air. They need a lot of air. They need a lot of airflow. I mean, air is your friend. Common rails just kind of cheat the system a little bit, but man, uh, these 12 valves, they need, they need some air. So again, some other big changes, fuel and air coming down the road, but that is the main, uh, the main, main pieces to the puzzle there. Some of the finer details, uh, obviously we've got some gaskets. We, uh, Brandon, uh, you know, got us hooked up with some gaskets. Again, if you're going to be rebuilding an engine, go just go get a whole uh, upper and lower kit. It's not really, I mean, we didn't need everything. Uh, we're going to be running fire rings. We got the Hamilton uh, fire ring head gasket kit to uh, put in this baby. And we've got some bearings, rod bearings, main bearings, all the bearings. We've got a rod bolt kit. Uh, Josh from Power Driven Diesel was awesome enough to uh, take care of the pistons and stuff. He had this stuff in stock, so we so we hooked up with them, and Josh was awesome enough to have that stuff in stock, which helped us get this thing rolling because pistons seem to be a hot commodity with shortages around the world right now. So we've got some bigger bowl valve relief pistons and these are going to be great because uh, they are like a, I guess you would call it like an OEM plus piston. You know, they got some fancy things. They got a good ring package. Most importantly, what we're after is if you guys have ever seen inside the engine of a first gen or like an early tw second gen, I believe, the bowl is, it's like, you know. <laughs> and this one, bigger, more bigger, more better. What this is going to allow us to do is run more timing uh, and hopefully aid in more power making. That's about to fall, so we should probably put that down there. But valve reliefs, uh, bigger bowls, uh, just a really nice, uh, you know, nice piston. So big thanks to Josh for having those in stock. Again, budget here, boys. Uh, we got the stock rods. Nothing special, nothing crazy. We're going to put rod bolts on stock rods just like that. And these, <laughs> these puppies are going to just let her rip, okay? Uh, again, billet rods just maybe down the road, but... Uh, not today, not now. You know what I mean? Just, pfft. Michael, how many how many engines have you built in your day? I know you like to be bashful and, and, and shy, but Michael has, Michael has blown up his fair share of engines and he has put the limit on what things can handle. And he assured me, <laughs> stock rods, bro, let's go, come on with it. So uh, we've got some ARP studs in the bottom end. So good hardware to lock everything in together uh, and really, I mean, this isn't, you know, you say budget, but if you added up all this stuff that we've just accumulated over time, it does add up. Engine rebuild in general are not cheap. It, the, the machine work, everything adds up more than you expect. So I think we've touched on it a little bit with like data loggers where like you spend money to save money. So like you can put a bunch of money in, that, in a stock cylinder head. They're like prone to crack and you have thousands of dollars in porting and yada 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 where you could just go pick one of those up and be done with it like mm -hmm. you're you're investing your money at the same time you're abusing things if you ever want to feel comfortable spending a bunch of money michael will talk michael <laughs> michael's really good at talking you in to spending more money but good money good reasons behind the money yep. 
had to build you back up there. You nice. see, you see that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but anyway, boys, that is the gist of it. If you guys have any questions, I'll try and uh, do some follow up questions uh, in the rebuild process, possibly. So if you guys have any questions, put them down in this video. I'll try and answer some of them in the engine building video coming very, very soon. So this is all of the puzzle pieces that we are going to sprinkle some sauce on and have it assembled. We'll show you guys all that. Maybe some tips, tricks, if you guys are gonna rebuild engines uh, by yourself. Michael's put together, yeah, it's just some junk in there. Yeah, yeah just junk. Michael's put together his fair share of engines, so we're gonna try and share that knowledge with you guys if it's something that you might uh, want to undertake. But again, uh, base foundation is good machine work that you can trust, that you're not gonna have any problems with. Um, and just a key, key few, few components, you know, obviously the cylinder head, depending on your power level, I guess that's the big thing. Yeah, that too. Some of our decisions were made off of horsepower, so you this... You said that earlier. Yeah. yeah. We are going as, okay, this is, let me rephrase. We're going as budget as we can with the most horsepower that we can, you know what I mean? If you guys have never seen the crazy hot matrix scale for your girlfriends, I should put that, that video is great. Just Google it, like crazy hot, crazy hot girlfriend matrix. Go YouTube that. There's like a graph chart of power and then there's a graph chart of money. And we're trying to crest in that uh, zone of less money, yes. most horsepower. And we're, you know, just, just do the graph chart. But that's where we're at, guys. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the key components. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I know this is, again, probably a little bit more talking of what the plans are. But, again, I want to share with that stuff with you guys. And we'll be getting down to work and getting into building this stuff. And I'm going to take the engine out. Michael's going to start prepping this stuff in the next upcoming videos. So, anyway, that's going to do it, right? Did I miss anything? Nothing that we won't. Nothing that we won't hit in, in the next one. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it. Hit the like button before you leave. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next video. See ya. Is that Mahali? <laughs> is, that, is that a Hawaiian bearing? Mahali? I mean, it makes sense to me. I didn't know he said HXs. That's cool. I'm not sure. You just forget everything. What?